The trend of inferior products is increasing at a breakneck pace. Why? Hey there, njroot22.com here with a little bit of a rant vlog today. Uh, be, uh, since we're not doing our uh, weekly puppy videos anymore because whatever, I'm not gonna get into it. We're gonna do, uh, we have a little bit of a guest appearance here and it's a rant. And I, I know everybody likes to be positive these days, but without pointing out the bad things and the negatives, positive and positivity doesn't have the same effect. So let's uh, give you a little cornerstone to feed off of here. We're talking about inferior products. Stuff that's not made well, okay? And it's not just things made in China or bought at the dollar store or whatever. It seems like the quality of everything is just gone to crap, gone to hell. Just like overnight it seems. Like 10 years ago I don't remember anything just being shoddy left and right. Everywhere I go, everything's falling apart, isn't made well, something's wrong. Now I'm, I'm holding up some, some props here. Let's, let's talk about this. This is one trend I've noticed like over the top, just over the past couple of years. It's packages of things that just suck, okay? I don't eat cereal, but he, my family eats cereal, okay? And they have this organic stuff, okay, uh, whatever. It's still, uh, just to get into it, it's like, holy crap, I didn't even look at it. This, this box of cereal here without milk is uh, 250 grams of carbs per box. And this one here is, holy moly, what's 50 times eight? 400 grams of carbs. I don't eat that many carbs in like three months. And this is just one box of cereal. But anyway, I've noticed and we, when I'm arranging the closet that these box tops, they don't stay shut anymore. These box tops, you open them up, the whole box is like, it's like one big floppy, it's like a floppy, I, it, it, there's no structure to it. You can't close it, this doesn't ever stay closed. And I'm like, well, what is this? You, and half the time when you rip it, if you could, this one's not so bad. It's sort of staying still, but you could feel it. It, it. This box is just, it's paper thin. It's like, why don't they just put it in a bag and call it a day? They're already using plastic. Why don't they just put it in one like slightly thicker plastic bag with a Ziploc on it and then call it a day? But they need all this printing on it to, to give you all the feel good cinnamon and, and all this whole picture of, oh, it's farm to table and all this. It annoys the crap out of me. There's these open boxes here. Just look at it. They just, they, they, you could blow it open. <sighs> like, this was like when the, that big bad wolf blew the pigs down. This was the first pig's house. You know what I mean? It wasn't made of, I think it was made of straw. Then the next one was made of what? Sticks. And then the next one was made of bricks. I don't know. I, I don't remember that uh, nursery ram anymore. But here's another thing. This is parchment paper we bought. I love parchment paper, but you buy any roll of this, this, these rolls for the kitchen with the with the sharp cutters on them, Reynolds wrap, Glad wrap, it doesn't matter. You open up the freaking box and it falls apart. Okay, and I'm very careful opening this stuff. I'm maybe everybody's weak now and they expect everybody to have like zero muscle power and and barely open it. But I mean, the, the minute I open these stupid rolls. They fall apart and then they don't hold the paper and they end up getting floppy, you end up like scuffing or cutting yourself because this little cutter here doesn't stay. I mean, I opened this box, look at it. Look at how it got shredded. Like I just tried opening with my finger and it was like ripping to pieces. The paper just, it, it's like, it's unbelievable how crappy this stuff is made. Oh, I don't know, it's safe to use in the oven. I don't know. I have really no idea. It's from a Nantucket distributing company. But it, it literally just, it just falls apart. You know, it, it, it's useless. And it gets more frustrating every time I use it. It's like, I'm willing to pay more. See, the thing is, the price of these things has stayed the same, the quality has gone down. I'd rather pay 50 cents more to get a little box. Maybe I'll get, see if they sell these uh, refillable ones and I'll just buy the tubes and stick them in. Like, Get a nice thing made of wood. I don't know, I'm really considering it. 
Here's another thing that really gets me. I have never broken an ice cube tray in my life. We bought some new paper, uh, what do you call it, um, ice cube trays, and they already have holes in them. After like two months, they don't hold, uh, aren't ice cube trays supposed to take, um, what do you call it, extreme temperature and then warm, extreme, broke right away. The first time in my life I've ever, I thought that you could never, I thought these things were indestructible, useless. And of course, every, I think everybody knows this, this really gets me. And I don't even want to call it a bottle of water. It's a freaking bag of water. Look at this thing. I can bend the bottle. Why are these plastic mean to be, are, they're not doing shit for the environment. Sorry for my friend. This is a bag of water. And it, it's, it's actually detrimental to the, to, the, to the happiness of a human being. You, you, they don't stand, look, I mean, like once you drink water, I'm gonna drink some, this is expired water, whatever. Look at this, I can drink water, and think, it just comes out. I mean, who, I remember Poland spring bottles used to be completely, like you could hold them like a man, like a little mug. I mean, look, I can literally like squeeze the water out of it. That's a bottle of water. This is a freaking bottle of water. Doesn't it, it, it it's, it's shit. It's a bag of water with a cap on it. It's really annoying. I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna clean up my mess here. Anyway, I, I know a lot of it has to do with where things are made and the quality control and of course uh, corporate profits, not just for the shareholders. <laughs> uh, it's for their, because no, the shareholders, like the, the people who buy dollar stocks, they don't vote in proxy votes or whatever. They, uh, they have no say, they're not even paying attention. Uh, it's for the profits of individuals and they cut corners left and right. This isn't just for appeasing environmentalists. Partially so, yes, but it's also for increased profits. So they, they figure out how to make it as cheap as possible. And here's another example. You know, I, I bought a little raincoat. It's way too big for me now, but this thing, I wore it outside when I'm doing dirty work. Zippers, this, these stupid plastic zippers, and I don't even know if it's a YYZ zipper or not. That's the largest uh, zipper company in the world. I think they make like 90% of all zippers. You can look it up on that fake uh, encyclopedia, which sometimes has, when it's not politically, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, influential, they, they get some things right. This is not a YYZ zipper, but wait a minute. No, but this zipper just, I mean, I've had jackets with zippers that go bad like instantly, like why, why can't, what happened to like the zippers used to be made of metal and they worked. Now they're made of plastic and they fail very quickly. So my rant here, to, see it's already getting stuck in the fabric. My rant here is, is about, it's just getting really frustrating for regular consumers to buy something that has a reasonable amount of endurance and, and that lasts for a while. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't everything. It's just more things I'm noticing recently. There are some things that, that last and, and work well, especially if you take care of them, certain power tools, like, like I said, a Honda, Honda makes good equipment these days, and there's still some, I guess, Japanese companies that make decent um, things like cars, like Honda and Toyota, those are quality cars still to this day. Um, much more so than pretty much any other car manufacturer out there. But I don't know, I, it's, it's a disturbing trend and I, I, it would be nice. And it's not just about made in the USA or whatever, because everybody's cutting corners to make maximum profit. And it's, it's frustrating for the people that end up paying for their things. And I don't think there'll ever be a revolt of any kind to, to say, I'm not buying your crap anymore. Or, I mean, one person at a time adds up really slowly. You need to have it a hundred people every day or a thousand people every hour quitting supporting these businesses that make crappy things and uh, don't listen to their customers. So I, I believe it's a kind of a losing cause. 
but it does not hurt to complain about it and maybe more people will will realize this and because I know nobody will watch my YouTube my YouTube videos get very little uh, traction right now maybe I'm not using the right keywords I don't know how to get on trending which is crap to begin with I don't know how to get the word out there I guess I have to market myself a little bit better and, and hit the pavement so to say with the going on other people's websites to share my stuff but people have an attention span of nothing these days and they like what they like so hopefully you stuck with me to the end if you have any any kind of similar things that I mean I just picked the, the last five things that I came across in the house there's probably a hundred more I'm gonna start saving these things up in a box somewhere in the basement maybe and every couple weeks or so I'm gonna talk about more things that just suck lately so have a good week end or week. I don't know when this is publishing, but thanks for watching.